What up y'all, this is Patrick Hayes. And today what I wanna to talk about is overcoming triggers. So if you wanna transform your life, what I have found is that one of the most important things to focus on is overcoming things that trigger us because it's those things that trigger us that spin us off into negative spirals and take away from our forward progression. And in fact, when we stop being triggered, when we notice that we're not being triggered by something we used to be triggered by, that's a great milestone marker. It's a great indicator that we've been making progress and we've been transforming our lives. So what I wanna go over in this video is a basic framework that I use for understanding triggers and understanding how to overcome them. So real quick, if you have been working on overcoming triggers in your life, please go ahead and put a yes in the comments below. And if this is something that you haven't really paid attention to, something you haven't really worked on before, go ahead and put a no down there just so I can be uh, aware of who's on the same page with me. Okay, so the way that I've organized this framework is into two categories. We have petty triggers and we have catastrophic triggers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over the differences between the two, the differences between how we process or work with the two, and then I'm gonna start talking about some of the things that cross over between them and some of the things that are universal that we use for all triggers. So first one being petty triggers. So what's a petty trigger? Petty trigger is something like your car breaks down or you're stuck in traffic and you're missing an appointment or uh, somebody says something that irritates you. These are petty triggers. They're things that if you were to experience that and not be triggered, then that would be an indicator of strength, right? You're actually, you're a stronger person when it doesn't bother you when somebody says something that's irritating. Or you're a stronger person when, you know, you get in a fender bender and you can be resilient and robust and just kind of move through that and be like, okay, well, it doesn't bother me. I can just pick up right where I left off and keep my momentum and stay positive. And that would actually be what the goal is, is to be able to just completely transmute them so that they don't even trigger you at all anymore. Now, this is different than catastrophic triggers. So with a catastrophic trigger, this could be something like, like your wife was murdered or like your child got paralyzed, like something really bad, something really tough. Now in this situation, it's not an indicator of strength to not be affected by it, right? So if something terrible like this happens, like it's actually a healthy thing to go through a kind of grieving process to 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 be triggered by it and have deep emotions and have to go through a deep emotional release right and to to kind of just cut yourself off and not experience any triggering from it is probably like some form of psychosis right it's not healthy that wouldn't be a healthy way of processing it so catastrophic triggers are something you have to approach differently now the goal with a catastrophic trigger like i said it's not to become triggerless when something catastrophic happens. What the goal is here is to be able to process it in an effective way. Processing it in a way where you continue to still make good decisions, even though this catastrophic thing happened, right? So um, processing it so you don't start developing bitterness and, and, and walking around bitter or resentment or you don't start making bad decisions in your life that are destructive because of this terrible thing that happened, right? Now, essentially one of the main keys for processing both kinds of triggers, whether it's catastrophic or petty, is the fact that we're gonna be reframing, right? So when we're processing petty triggers, one of the main things that we do is we reframe our reality. So we start looking at these things, we start digging deeper into them and we decide that we can perceive it in a different way so it doesn't irritate us as much. Now, same thing with the catastrophic triggers, except for the catastrophic triggers are gonna be things that we have to process really deeply because they're really emotionally trying things that push us through a deep kind of transformation process. But in the end, essentially what, we'll, what we're doing is we're reframing our relationship to our reality in a way that ultimately empowers us and in a way that doesn't take away from our positive decision-making skills, but it still uses reframing. So whether we're dealing with petty or catastrophic triggers, reframing is a big part of this. So this is going to include learning more about our own psychology, about being honest with ourselves, learning how to be honest with ourselves about what's really going on. If we're not honest with ourselves about what's going on, we're not gonna make any progress, right? So self-honesty is super important. We learn a lot about self-honesty when we're working on triggers. We also learn, like I said, about, about our psychological disposition, about the, because we're trying to get to the root of what the trigger is. And when we can get to the root of what the trigger is, then we are in a power position because then we can start actively reframing and making the kinds of belief choices that can free us from the triggered responses. How do I take this situation and flip it into my favor? How do I look at it from a perspective that is beneficial, that is optimistic? 
get creative with the reframing process. Now, one of the really cool things about working on petty triggers is that a lot of petty triggers are actually associated with different traumas that we have when we were younger. And what's cool about this is that when we overcome these petty triggers, we're actually overcoming deeper traumas that have been sitting within us for a long time. And what this does is this trains us for catastrophic triggers because the process is pretty similar. If we have some sort of traumatic situation that we went through and we're holding on to trauma, then it's important for us to learn how to release that trauma and how to process that trauma. And oftentimes when we do process it, the petty triggers associated with it don't trigger us anymore. Good example of this is, you know, if, if we uh, got um, severely psychologically abused as a child, we might be hypersensitive to judgments or negative statements from other people, right? So if we're able to release that trauma from when we were a child, when we originally were traumatized, then the sting of negative comments becomes much less. It stops bothering us. But in order to get to that point, we had to process deeper trauma. And this is very similar to the process of, of dealing with catastrophic triggers. So what happens is when we process a lot of our petty triggers and we get to the root of some of the traumas that are causing some of the petty triggers, then we start developing a process for how to deal with these deeper traumas. And then when something catastrophic happens in our life, we've already built a tool belt for how to deal with these catastrophic things. So some of the different tools that you can use for dealing with catastrophic triggers are things like EFT tapping, emotional freedom technique, things like mindful meditation, mindful meditation clearing techniques. So this is basically where you um, where you're able to be mindful and see when these issues are coming up, when these triggers are coming up, when these traumas are being triggered and basically look at it neutrally and that kind of helps it detox out of your body. You can do psychedelic work. There's a lot of you know good shaman out there. I'd be very careful when you're if you're picking a shaman, but there are a lot of good shaman out there and if you find a good shaman that can work with you, you can do some deep psychedelic work and you can release a lot of trauma. Other things like constellation work, that's another thing you can do. Ancestry work. You can even come at it from the physical side of it. So you can do things like rolfing. Rolfing is a great way to release uh, traumas that are stuck in your physical body through, it's basically like, like hardcore massage is what it's like. like, like ultra deep tissue down to the bone. And, um, and it can release trauma that's stuck deep, deep in the muscle in the myofascia, right? So it's releasing your myofascia. So that gives a little bit of insight on some of the different processes for releasing deep trauma, dealing with catastrophic triggers, and also um, how to deal with petty triggers, right? And how they're, they're linked together. So like I said, reframing is a huge part of this, right? Now, I have a MP3 that I made recently. I'll put a link here for you. And this MP3 is a really, really powerful tool for being able to reframe your uh, association with challenge itself. So it's actually kind of like the key of all reframing. And it's, um, and it's reframing challenge. So you can use this with any challenge. It's something that's universal in that sense. It's not something where you're just reframing one particular situation. It's important to be able to do that, and that's where the creative reframing process comes into play. But when you have anchored an idea of how to reframe challenge in itself, it makes the whole process of reframing things way, way easier. So check out that MP3. I think you're really gonna like it. I'm also gonna be offering more detailed practices in an upcoming course, so I'll keep you posted on that. So thanks so much for tuning in. This is Patrick Hayes. Like, subscribe, share with your friends. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and put them in the comments below, and I will talk to you next time. One love.